Okay. It looks like we are live. How is everyone today? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. Thank you so much for joining me. My name is Jason Levine, and for today's live stream, we're going to be talking about how to use one of my favorite plugins and something that I showcased briefly last week and then had quite a few Twitter requests to show kind of the overall process of using this particular plugin. It's the Manny Marikin EQ. Now this is available as a third party effect from the company called Waves, W-A-V-E-S, waves.com. Um, it's currently on sale right now, actually, for a whopping 29 US dollars. And this is really one of my go-to equalization plugins, primarily because it's extremely musical. Uh, it's very transparent if you just want to do subtle changes, but more importantly, it just has beautiful, lush, rich qualities, beautiful air on the top end, wonderful low end control, and really powerful mids that will just allow you to bring things like dialogue right up front and center without sounding crunchy, without sounding distorted or overly boomy or muddy. Um, it's just really wonderful sounding because it's actually a combination of six different equalizers from six different consoles, which is kind of the brilliance behind it. So you get a variety of different sounds all encased in one plugin. Additionally, it's really easy to use. So if you've struggled with our native parametric equalizer in both Premiere and Audition, which I'm going to show you as well, just kind of to clinically repair uh, some snare ring, this one is easy to use. It's very easy to understand. And I'm going to take you through all the, all the facets of it and just to kind of show you how easy it is. And also, of course, you can automate parameters in it, which makes it really, well, even more powerful in, in, in a musical context. So as always, thank you for joining us on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Periscope, and Behance. We've got Marco Lopez, Claudio, Rene, Mayer, Paul, Stephanie Reed, <laughs> editing your Christmas film and five commercials. That is so amazing, though not surprising. You are a, you work tirelessly. You're, you're an inspiration. Thomas Christensen from Denmark. Very nice to see you. Uh, we've got uh, Yaki Zammerstein from Israel coming to us on Behance. Over on YouTube, we've got Pierre Julien. Bonjour. All right, Francis Shepard. Very nice, very, very cool. And coming to us from uh, over here on Twitter Periscope, we've got Daniel Barrichtold, ASN83. Michael, thank you so much for joining. All right, well, let's go ahead and get right started, and then I'll take questions at the end, as always. And uh, hello, Thomas, and hello, Daniel. I'm going to put my headphones on here as well so that I can actually hear what you're hearing. Oh, and probably a good idea to switch my screen over. Oh, and I need to make a couple more tweaks to this. I forgot to reset my screen shape. That's okay. Sorry, I'm just going to bring a couple of these things up here. All right, this should be good enough. Like that. All right, so we're going to start um, by uh, using this equalizer on a mixed drum track or a drum bus. ASN83, love you for my run. Ah, thank you very much. Right back at you, my friend. Thank you for watching. Um, and you might say, well, I don't mix drums. I do video. It's dialogue and maybe a music track or, you know, I don't do music. Okay, understood. The reason for showing it on something like drums is, is twofold. One, because a drum kit, a stereo mix drum kit, kind of embodies a very broad frequency spectrum, right? You have the kick drum, which really, that's where all of your low end, your sub, Right, that's where all of that exists. So in a, you know, whether you're talking LFE for film in a 5.1 mix or just sort of low end sound for sound design, you've got your kick drum, you have your floor toms, even some of your rack toms tend to have a lot of that nice warm low end. And then of course the snare drum itself, very broad spectrum of frequencies that it covers, uh, the fundamental sort of boom, the fatness happens at around 150, 135 hertz, but the crack of the snare, that and that's kind of what gives you that attack and what really makes you feel that hit. That actually exists in the two, three, three and a half K range. And then of course you have cymbals, hi-hats, crash cymbals, ride cymbals, and those can cover a very broad spectrum depending upon what type and what era cymbals you're using. Now this particular kit is using some new and vintage cymbals. So you're gonna have some of the sort of 
upper mids and, and highs, and then some extreme highs with things like a ping ride that really cover at anywhere from, say, 5K all the way up to 16K and beyond. So drums are just kind of a good idea to allow just the average listener to hear how this simple EQ can really lift a track that's sounding a bit dead or just maybe a bit flat and kind of give it some life, give it a little bit of air, and also give it a little bit more space. That's kind of the key always when equalizing, right? Is you're trying to carve out space in the mix to allow vocals and dialogue to sit, to allow music, to allow sound design, to allow incidental underscore to permeate. It's all about carving out space. And this plugin really allows you to do that brilliantly. So this is from uh, the track that I've been playing the last couple of streams here. It's a cover of mine, which may get released one of these days. and uh, Or it's a cover that I'm doing, rather. It's not a cover of mine. And here's kind of the flat drums as they exist right now. Take a quick listen. Okay, so they, they sound okay, they don't sound bad, but they're just, they're just a little flat and I'd like to kind of bring it together and kind of bring out a bit more of the harmonics and the tonality of this kit to really kind of resonate. So I'm gonna come up to my track here. Now I've got everything bussed to uh, a group here, to its own drum bus. I've also got some global compression already applied and curiously, a little bit of ambient reverb. Normally I wouldn't put reverb on the bus like that. I'm gonna leave it as it is. It's really just for reflection and ambience. And we're gonna add the EQ after that, okay? So come up to the insert here. Now the Manny American EQ uh, is available as VST and uh, AU as well. Both versions get installed should you purchase said plugin. And uh, I'm gonna use the AU version here and we will find it in the list right up here. You'll also get a mono and stereo version and we'll go into the mono one a little bit later when I'm showing how to use it for some dialogue and voiceover. So grab the stereo version, place it here, and here's what it looks like. Again, really simple, clean interface. If you've looked at our parametric EQ, it's not totally unlike that. This isn't technically a fully sweepable parametric, but um, you know, similar functionality. High pass and low pass filters. You've got four bands effectively. You've got a shelving and a bell option on band four, which accounts for all of your highs. You've got your input setting, your input level. So the set, the input of the track going into this effect. Sometimes you need to attenuate that if the signal's a little too hot so that you don't clip. And then the output of the effect, as well as a phase invert on the effect itself. Now, again, most of these plugins from Waves tend to have that. Of course, in Audition, you also have phase invert on the individual tracks as well, okay? And then you've got some nice presets also to get you started. And I like to point those out just because if you're struggling, you're just trying to figure out, oh, where do I even begin? Um, now, most of these are, of course, music related, but if you're looking for a way to try and add some EQ to, say, a voiceover or some dialogue, you can try some of these lead vocal, you know, uh, bright vocal presets. They just might kind of dial in and get you started. And when you listen to it against everything else, you'll think, oh, okay, that kind of works. All right. Now, again, as I mentioned, what's really cool about this is that this is actually made up of multiple EQs and EQ modules from many different consoles. You've got an SSL 980, you've got a Motown console, you've got a Neve 1073, a Quad 8, uh, there's an API console as well, and an Avalon 2055 for those highs, for that for the, the high band, band number four. So each of these has a very unique sound. Each of these can be used together, and this is partly why this one is so good for mixing for video. Because what tends to happen with a lot of EQs, even our own parametric, if you're using that same EQ on multiple things, they all start to have kind of a very similar sound. This one, because the nature of it has literally six different modules all contained in this one plugin, it just gives a really unique color, a really unique flavor to your audio. And no matter how you use it or how many you use, everything's gonna sound a little bit unique and have its own space, all right? So when we listen to these drums, what, you know, and there's lots of different ways to think about equalizing, 
you know, in general, uh, I tend to look for things that I want to boost, but I'm also always listening for stuff that's wrong that I want to cut, or maybe that's annoying, like a ring, or if there's too much boom or too much warmth. On the surface with this one, I want to start by just adding a little bit of, uh, just a little, a little bit of brightening, a little bit of kind of just making that snare crack a little more and kind of opening up some of the mid range. All right. So we're going to start with this band three. Now, each of these can be enabled or disabled. And actually, even before I get to that, let's talk about the high pass and low pass. These are really commonly used filters, um, particularly with things like voiceover, right? So uh, just for those of you unfamiliar, so a high pass filter, high pass equals low cut, all right? <laughs> Low pass equals high cut. So with a high pass filter, and this is a fully sweepable filter from zero to 750 hertz, what that does is it will effectively filter off the low end at a very steep curve. So for things like dialogue, you typically don't want dialogue to have you know, a frequency range or any kind of stuff happening at the 40 hertz range or even necessarily really around 70. Not, not really for film. If it's just a straight voiceover or you're doing a book on tape, you know, book a digital book, maybe. But in general, probably not. And in fact, many studios, when you're tracking voiceover, a lot of the microphones, including the one that I'm using here, will tend to have a roll off. Like in, in fact, this particular Audio-Technica has a, a bass roll off at 80 Hertz. So it automatically applies a high pass filter to cut off bass frequencies below 80, all right? Now, I can show that to you while this is playing here and just kind of let you hear what that sounds like. Not super dramatic on drums, but you'll, you'll get the idea. You can see it's starting to thin out. Sorry, my, my mouse is freaking. Right? We can bring that bass back in. And then, of course, the opposite of that is a low pass, high cut. Now, this is really commonly used in pretty much all all EDM and a lot of sort of modern pop music where you tend to have those sections in the song where you still hear the beat but everything's kind of muffled and then you slight you start to hear and then suddenly it's full program again now this particular low pass only has a cutoff starting at around 1.8 kilohertz so to get that full like you actually need this to go a bit lower but let me play this for you and you'll hear exactly what I'm talking about. All right, take a listen. Right? So right now, everything above 1800 hertz is cut off. And then we can gradually bring it back in. Okay. Now, one of the reasons why I love these is, first of all, these are fully sweepable. So you're, 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 you have all of the incremental values from 1.8 all the way up to, in this case, I think it's 25K, similarly with 0 to 750. Now, these little notches that you see here, these are, I think these were just designed as some of Manny's sort of go-tos. So if you, you know, just want to make sure to, you know, you can click on these individually and it's going to go directly to one of those frequencies as opposed to, as you can see here, scrubbing through the different values, okay? But what's also really cool about this, and you can pretty much do this with all of the, uh, or at least most of the plugins out there, is that you can automate this. So if you wanted to do sort of that pass of the, you know, remove all the treble and then gradually bring it back in, you can automate that really easily. So if I were to come over to the track here and go into write mode, all right, what you, what that does, and by the way, this works exactly the same way in Premiere. When you're in track automation write mode, what that means is that anything that you do inside of this effect while you're playing back, it's basically recording all of your actions. So if I start play, and let me make sure we're at the beginning of the section here so I have plenty of, uh, plenty of lead time. When we begin playback, I'm going to start adjusting that low pass filter and then the high pass filter, and you'll see, and then we'll play it back, and you'll see how it automates those parameters, okay? And the same goes for all the individual EQ 
gain controls and the frequency selectors as well. So all of this stuff can be automated, even the input and output too. All right, so take a quick listen. Here we go. We're going to do high pass, sorry, low pass first and then high pass. something like that, okay? So now, when we play this back, you'll see that it's going to automate all of that and it's gonna play back all of those changes that we just made. Now, if I twirl down my automation lane inside of Audition here, and I go into Show Envelopes, all right, and this is on that drum bus. If I go to the Manny American Stereo EQ, this now shows you all of the various parameters that are available for automation. And it's going to show you a little asterisk down here at both the high pass and low pass filters. And that's telling me that there were changes, there was automation that happened um, on those two particular controls. So if I want to see the envelope, the actual automation of the high pass filter, and go ahead and turn this on. And now you can see all the keyframes. And by the way, you can manually adjust this if you so desire. Similarly, if I come back in here and go into the low pass, you should see that one earlier. There it is, different color coding, same thing here, okay? So you can see all the various automation and this would this is sort of a good opportunity to even smooth out some of those transitions. You can see like right here, I accidentally went all the way down. Just doing it with a mouse is not totally ideal. This The other one has a bunch of zigzag movement in there. But as we wind back and play, if you take a look now, you'll see that this will now, of course, play back all of that automation. Take a listen. You can see it automating the parameters. Take a look at the, the, butt, the knobs there. All right, now it goes into the high pass. Start to kill some of that low end. Okay, so fully automatable, real simple, real easy. You can create those kind of effects. Again, this low pass, not the best necessarily for that, but you can get really creative in how you use these things, changing the sound over time, right? Talk about color timing, sound timing. Same concept here. You're changing things as things change in the scene. You can automate all of this. You can tweak it after the fact really easily. All right. Let's go ahead and uh, erase that automation. We don't need that. Do the same thing for this one here. All right, let's erase it. Cool, okay. And we'll go back into just read mode. Okay. All right, so now we're gonna get into the actual sort of EQ part of it. So I mentioned the crack of the snare. The fundamental of a snare is approximately 3.2, 3.5K. This, of course, can vary depending upon the type of snare, metal, wood, the type of head. But generally, when you want to really emphasize that k to really make it cut through, you're going to find that somewhere between, again, three, you know, two and a half to 4K. Now, this particular frequency three has 1.6, 3, 2, and 5. So 3.2 is really where I want to be. And as I start raising the gain here, you're just going to notice that it's really going to start to not only lift up the snare, but the toms and some of the other elements, you're just going to feel more of the drums. You're, gonna, you're literally going to feel and almost, you can smell the presence of the kit as we accentuate this. All right, so let's start. Let's take a listen. Starting to get a little bright. Let's pull it back a little. And we can also cut at 3.2. And it's nice and it's warm, but again, it's it feels like it's a little covered.
Okay. Now, one of the reasons that I keep my frequency analysis open at all times is that I love to be able to see a very clean and clear delineation between kick and snare hits, right? And ideally, what you want to see on a frequency analysis is that you should see the kick. When the kick goes up, there should be a dip at around, say, 100 hertz. The kick should really be focused around somewhere between, again, it depends on the type of kick, the size of the kick, um, how it's mic'd, but generally somewhere between say 55 and 75 should be that fundamental hit of the kick that's jumping on your frequency analysis. And then you're gonna see that fundamental of the snare, again, that the fat <clears throat> around 150 or so, 200, give or take, all right? So you wanna see a little dip in there. Now, when I'm listening back, there's, there's a little bit of extra warmth um, that I just wanna attenuate slightly. Now, because you have this mixture of different EQs in here, um, you can do this without, again, creating these weird phasey type artifacts, and it just sounds unbelievably warm and musical. So I'm gonna keep band three. We're not even gonna use this high one just yet. I'm gonna turn off frequency band two, and now we're gonna focus here on band one. Now again, 140 hertz, that's kind of that fat attack of the snare, so I don't, I don't wanna kill that, but looking and listening, I'm hearing a little bit of just muddiness, right? And it's probably just a little overall bleed from the overhead mics and some of the kick drum in there. So we're gonna start at 220 and I'm gonna boost a little bit so you can hear what's going on in there. And then I'll cut, and we probably only need to cut a dB and a half or so, all right? So take a listen, here we go. Oh, sorry, and I've got the high, <laughs> The high pass is, is still in there. Why is that still automating? Hold on one second. Turn off the automation. That will not happen. Okay. So let's kill the EQ. So here's no EQ. I got, ooh, that sounds kind of flat. Let's kick it in. Off. On. All right. And again, if you're watching those meters, there's a really clear, there's clear definition of the kick and the snare and the toms and everything is just, it's just opened up. Now, I don't think that this needs any real high end, but again, this one in particular is using these Avalon EQs for the high band here, 10K to 25K. And if you want to add an overall lift to your mix, and this is something that I find a lot of customers asking me about, you finished a mix in Premiere and everything's good, but it just, it just needs, it needs, it needs something at the top. It needs air, it needs to breathe. If you add 20 or 25 K, and you'll see that down here on the frequency band four, you have a bell style curve or a shelving curve. Again, the bell style curve is going to affect adjacent frequencies. You can't adjust the bandwidth, it's pre-selected, but that's fine, it's done in a musical way. The shelving filter is just going to increase from whatever your control point is, in this case, 20K and up, right? So typically, if you wanna lift and add a bit of air, you're gonna use something like a shelving filter, okay? So let's go ahead and go to shelving, and I'm just going to start lifting it around 20K. Now, 25K in particular, few humans can hear 25K. And frankly, as you start to get older, post 40, few can hear above 20K, right? So a lot of that is perception, but you do perceive it. It does create that airy, spacey kind of feel. And again, it just kind of brightens the environment without making it harsh. Now, if you increase a lot at 10K, and I'll play that for you, it's gonna start to get kind of brittle. This doesn't need it. There's plenty of 10K in there already. But 20K, 25K, it's gonna give you this little bit of lift, a little bit of air. And again, it's almost gonna feel like you have more dynamic range used subtly, all right? 
So first I'll start with 10. This is what we don't want, but just listen to what 10K does, okay? It's still musical, so it's not gonna make it harsh, but we don't need it, it's bright enough. Take a listen here. I mean, it doesn't sound bad, but again, it's, 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 it doesn't need that range. But if I go to 20K now, and now I increase this. Now this might be a little hard to hear over the stream because I don't know. Uh, it's, it's being broadcast over at, at 48K. So theoretically you're getting up to a 24K limit, but you're gonna just, if you're listening with cans or on a nice pair of speakers, it just adds a little bit of airiness. Take a listen here. wider. Let's turn it off. Let's kick it in. Okay. And again, sometimes a lot of that is just perception, but if your mix is sounding good and you're happy with it, but you just want to give it a little bit of a lift on top without increasing high crunchy nastiness, this filter, frequency four, even 15, although you gotta be careful at 15, but 20 and 25K, three, you know, two to five dB, it's just gonna give you a beautiful lift and just a real nice airy quality. And I love using it just for that, okay? Now, a couple of the other cool things that you can do in here, we talked about automating. Many of you who've probably worked in Audition know that if you start manipulating effects parameters, so let's just say we did something like this, and you start doing stuff and you forget, oh, what it was What was it on minus two before and I just moved it to minus eight, I don't remember. Well, if you go up to undo, undo doesn't respect, un uh, manipulations of parameters don't affect the undo menu. So you're kind of out of luck there. However, you can undo directly inside of the effect itself. So here's your undo redo. So if we just made that adjustment here, if I simply click undo, it goes back to the last state undo, it'll go back to the state before that. Undo, it'll go back to the state before that. Undo, it goes back to the state before that. So you have undo and redo contained in the effect here, which again is, is really useful. Um, I really love that ability because I've been guilty of it myself, where if I'm working in some of our native plugins and I move something a couple dB and I wanna, oh, what was it before? Can't quite do it. So this has undo and redo built into the effect. Also, you've also got a wonderful feature in the form of an A minus, uh, an A, B listening. So this allows you to toggle between different settings. So let's say I wanted to hear this version and you'll notice that there's an A section up here. If I click this, this now goes to your B. So you have A and B. Now, typically what I might wanna do is have two completely different presets. So let's go to something like, I think I have yeah, we can just go to one of these just random presets in here. Okay, let's just go to overheads. This is probably gonna sound pretty bright. So here's the EQ that we just created. We're happy with this, but we wanna hear this other EQ. Here we go, ready? And we can change this too. Let's go back to A, B. Okay, now what if I would like to take A, copy it over to B, and then tweak just that one setting? Like, all right, how about no air, but um, no attenuation at 220, okay? So you'll notice that there's a little button in here that has an A with an arrow going towards B. That means copy A to B. So when I click on that, what you'll see now is that A and B, as I'm toggling between them, have exactly the same settings. So now in B, I can actually disable the air and let's say, let's do only a half a dB of a cut at 220. So we can start with the original A. And now let's go to B. A. B. 
A. Okay, so a really easy way to toggle between A and B very effectively. Now, once you start doing this, you might say, okay, I wanna create a preset. What's the best way to do it? Well, this is where things can sometimes get tricky with third-party presets uh, in Audition especially, because you're probably wanting to simply come up here and create a preset, and you can do that. The only problem is, is that that creates a preset that is native only to this session on this effect. If you want a preset that you're gonna be able to use in any session on any project, you're gonna to wanna to save it from the menu here. And in this case, you're going to say, put into preset menu as. So if you choose that and you give your preset a name, and it does create an audition preset, but this allows you to use it anywhere in audition, do so, do whatever it is. And then when you go into the load menu, you'll see at the bottom, this is where your user presets are contained. And you can actually see that I made one here called MIA drum bus. So if I go ahead and select that, okay, turns that on. This is the one that I wound up using. Now I can AB this. Yeah, see, I think I might even cut this back a little bit, okay? So, saving and loading presets. Copy and pasting AB listening between two completely different settings. Undo, redo, sweepable bands, high pass, low pass, automation, Really cool, really simple. Now I'm gonna show you one more example of this on voice in just a second. I wanted to also talk about uh, our native parametric EQ because this is, again, different, and this allows you for to have very clinical control, but you need, to, you need to be a little more mindful and you need to kind of study and work with EQ a bit more before you dive very deep into our parametric because it is pretty complex, but mind you, very nice sounding, very warm sounding and uh, very clean sounding. So when I'm listening to the snare drum here, I was hearing that there's a little bit of a, there's a little bit of a ring, all right? So take a, take a listen to this. Okay, so it's, it's subtle, but it's bothering me a little bit. So this is where, because you have variable bandwidth control here, you can get very specific. And if you can hear what it is that you're trying to attenuate or to soften or to boost, you can identify it and pull it out with a very, very narrow band. So we're gonna start, I'm guessing uh, it, it sounds, and again, looking at it here, it's somewhere in the low 200s, which again is about 70 to 90 uh, hertz away from that fundamental fat hit of the snare. So it is, it's something in the head that's ringing. So we're gonna use band number two here, and I'm gonna set a very, very narrow Q value of around 14. Again, this is your bandwidth. And just to illustrate that, this is a Q value of two. And you can see that it looks like, again, it's kind of like that bell curve, but as you adjust higher values, it's very, very narrow. And the more narrow your band, the fewer adjacent frequencies you'll be adversely affecting by boosting or cutting. So with a Q value of say 14, this is very, very narrow. So this is really for clinical attenuation of things like a snare ring. So if I play this back now, I'm gonna sweep this. It's around, it's around like two, 210, 220. Let's take a listen. Whoops, sorry, boost first. By the way, there was an update to Audition today, and I've noticed that since doing that, it's sometimes, I'm not seeing the, see, the, the UI just went away. 
So I'll have to report this to them later. We're not, we're not seeing the curve anymore. Um, but in any case, so we're gonna drop this around six and a half dB, and then we're gonna come up about 100 hertz higher to around 300. Let's do around, say, 302. We're gonna use an even narrower band here, maybe around 18, and we're gonna do a similar cut, all right? So before, after. And we just got rid of, rid of that little bit of that mm, 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 subtly. Notice, because these are so narrow, we're still letting, you know, 225 to, to 290 get in there, but we're pulling out a couple of those frequencies that are causing a bit of that, a bit of that ring that just, I wasn't loving, okay? And now when we bring everything else back into the kit, it's real clean. So again, just to kind of showcase everything, here's our before with no EQ and, and also no compression in this case. And now let's turn on our work. Okay. You can just feel it just, just really opens everything up, right? And then when you start to add some of the other instrumentation in here, now this isn't perfectly mixed, but you'll get the idea. <laughs> Super clean, all right? So that's showcasing that on some drums showing off the stereo variation. All right, so let's go into uh, a little bit of mono usage here. So this is uh, a voiceover that I did for one of our um, NAB or IBC videos announcing uh, some new motion graphics template features. And this is just a straight voiceover into this very microphone. There's no EQ, there's no compression, but I just want to give it just a little bit of, again, just kind of bring out the voice a little bit more and do it very, very musically, right? So first let's take a listen to the clean untouched version. Simply drag and drop spreadsheets to create infographics using motion graphics templates. Any updates to data are automatically updated in the infographic. Responsive Design Time is now available in After Effects, so you can create motion graphics that can adapt to changes in length while preserving the integrity of keyframes. Okay, so it sounds good. I just, I just think it needs it needs a little bit of uh, maybe a little bit of shimmer, but just again, a, the voice just needs to be a little more sparkly. It needs to come out a little bit more, and perhaps very subtly attenuate some of the low end. I have a lot of low frequency in my voice, so it might just be a slight, a tad bit too warm, especially if there's gonna be music underneath it. So for this, again, I can add the Manny American Mono to the effects rack, or I can run it immediately destructively from the effects menu here. So to keep it non-destructive until we process, let's go ahead and add it from here into the effects rack. I'll grab the Mono version, okay? And we'll, res whoops, we'll reset this full reset and take a, excuse me, take a listen. Now, in terms of vocals, in terms of voice dialogue, a couple key frequencies to keep in mind. Now, again, you've got a lot of mid range in your voice. You got a lot of low and low mid fundamentals. And when you start to get into the higher frequencies, particularly three, five and eight K, there's some very specific things that happen there. So three to four K, this tends to be a very 
a, a nice, pleasing intelligence range. You can really intelligibly hear what's going on if you increase those frequency ranges. Now, 5K, 5K to 7K is where you can incur sibilance. That's where you can start to really um, uh, boost the fundamentals of those harsh sounds, depending upon who did the voiceover and what they were what they were speaking on. So you want to be careful around that range. But in 8K, this is where you start to add shimmer. So not unlike what I just showed you with giving that air lift on the overall mix, 8K on a single voiceover can sometimes just give it a little bit of this, it's just, it's just a little bit of shimmer, a little bit of sparkle without making it sound crunchy and bright. Um, and again, the nature of the curve of this particular frequency and on this one, that I write, I wrote it down. What is the, I think, this isn't the Motown EQ. This is, I think this is a Neve 1073. It's kind of hard to mess this up, but you'll hear different results as you approach. So let's go ahead and start with this and I'll start increasing it at 3.2 and you'll kind of hear what that does. And it's, it's pretty nice. Simply drag and drop spreadsheets to create infographics using motion graphics templates. Any updates to data are automatically updated in the infographic. Okay, off. Responsive design time is now available in After Effects, so off. you can create motion graphics that can adapt to changes in length while preserving the integrity of keyframes. Okay. So you can hear, it kind of gives you, again, sort of those, it's that, it's mids, not high mids, kind of mid-mids, right? Maybe a little crunchy, um, but still pretty good. Let's listen to 5K now and hear what that does, all right? Simply drag and drop spreadsheets to create infographics using motion graphics templates. Any updates to data are automatically updated in the infographic. Sorry. Responsive design time is now available in After Effects, so you can create motion graphics that can adapt to changes in length while preserving the integrity of keyframes. Simply drag and drop spreadsheets to create infographics using motion graphics templates. Any updates to data are automatically updated. Okay, now that one, that one seems to be doing it for me because my voice in this case, there's a lot of warmth in there and I don't want to accentuate that 3K. There's plenty of that already, but that 5K range actually, because it's not sibilant, it's giving me just a little bit of that nice detail in that 5, 6K range, okay? So 5K kind of actually works for me here, but let's go to 8K now and listen to what that one does in the infographic. Responsive design time is now available in After Effects, so you can create motion graphics that can adapt to changes in length while okay. preserving the integrity of keyframes. Let's turn it off. Simply drag and drop spreadsheets to create infographics using motion graphics templates. Any updates to data are automatically updated in the infographic. Responsive design time is now available in After Effects. All right. So I think if I use 8K, and what have I got, about 3.5 dB here? Yeah, 3.6. I'm now going to come over to the... Um, Let's see. It sounds it sounds like it's kind of in the 140 range, but it could be it could be around 220. Let me take a listen. So you can create motion graphics that can adapt to changes in length while preserving the integrity of keyframes. Yeah. So I'm just going to cut ever so slightly at around 140, about a half a dB, and let's take a listen now and I'll turn the whole effect off first and then I'll turn it back on. Here we go. Simply drag and drop spreadsheets to create infographics using motion graphics templates. Any updates to data are automatically updated in the infographic. Responsive design time is now available in After Effects, so you can create motion graphics that can adapt to changes in length while preserving the integrity of keyframes. Okay, so you can hear it when I say keyframes. It just has this, there's this little shimmer, right? It's not sibilance. Again, it could potentially get a little sibilant at around 5K, but because this has the, uh, the notch at 5K, Technically, sibilance starts at around 5.6 to 6.3 is where you tend, tend to hit that kind of really harsh fundamental. So again, they did a really good thing with this musically. Unless you're, you're, you're prone to sibilance, you've got something that's sibilant, you're gonna wanna be careful in that range. It actually worked on this vocal too, but 8K kind of gives it a nice little, little, little bit of lift. And just by cutting a little bit of those low frequencies, the 140, I've already got enough low end in there and things can get really just they can get cloudy between 140 and 200, particularly if it's just voice. So you wanna be mindful. And this is where you really wanna have a good solid listening environment and be able to play this back in different places to kind of audition what the whole thing is gonna sound like. But right away, I mean, it just sounds really nice. Now, if I didn't use this 8K, let's say we wanted to just give this thing a lift. Let's do, let's do 12 and a half, okay? And see what this one does, all right? Take a quick listen. 
Simply drag and drop spreadsheets to create infographics using Motion Graphics templates. Any updates to data are automatically updated in the infographic. Responsive Design Time is now available in After Effects, so you can create motion graphics. And see, if you're listening, what's, what's, why I wouldn't use 12.5 on this is because, again, the vocal is already bright, it's already present. 12.5 is, it's just, it's a little, it's, it's still very much in the range that almost all people can hear, pretty much everyone, uh, unless you've incurred hearing loss and frequency loss. <laughs> And by increasing this, in this case around 5 dB, it's starting to get a little brittle, right? Because it's also accentuating some of that, uh, some of that 10K. I've got it on bell curve here, and or in and around 10, 11K, and this, it just doesn't need it. So it starts to sound thin, right? Versus if we went to something like 20 and just gave it a little bit of a lift. And for that, as mentioned, we would use that shelving variation here. Let's do a shelf at around 20. That can adapt to changes in length while preserving the integrity of keyframes. Simply drag and drop spreadsheets to create infographics using motion graphics templates. Any updates to data are automatically updated in the infographic. Responsive design time is now available in After Effects, so you can create motion graphics that can adapt to changes in length while preserving the integrity of keyframes. Okay, off. Simply drag and drop spreadsheets to create infographics using motion graphics templates. On. Any updates to data are... So what I wound up doing was turning back on the 8K band, dropping it down to around 2.5 dB. I added a little bit of air, 3 dB at 20K, and then cut 140 by about... 0.7 dB, all right? And it just kind of lifted the voice up. It just makes it sound wonderfully present without, you know, without harshness, without being too thin. Just the right amount of bass and warmth with the right amount of clarity and high end, all right? And that's thanks to this EQ. Again, having these fixed bandwidths, sometimes it's a wonderful thing. This is my go-to for voices. This is my go-to for, for, for bust mixes generally, again, to give things a little bit of a lift or to do some subtle cuts. It's available from waves.com right now. Uh, like I said, I think it's still on sale for around 29 US dollars. If you're struggling with EQ, if you don't like the sound of some of our native ones, if you're looking for a plugin that just kind of has some great ways to get started and lots of cool features, this is a great one to get started with, all right? And that, my friends, is the Manny American EQ. So for our last couple of minutes here, we're going to take some questions, if we've got any. Move over to the chats. All right. Let's see what we've got in here. All right. Bruce Arfson, hello. Pradeep, LaRue, Sandy, Aid, Renee, Tim. All right. Stacy Poulos. Stacy, is there a list of what I'm teaching and when? Actually, no. Uh, <laughs> I get asked that a lot. I don't know if you're still watching, but no. I, you know, these are, I, I keep them live on purpose, and I just tend to kind of field what I'm doing by looking at uh, Twitter comments and stuff that I have written down. But if you've got something that you want to see, um, let me know, and I can, I, can, uh, uh, I can stream on that. Thomas Christensen, does Audition have curves for the automation like DOS. Okay, yeah, so I'm guessing you saw that. That was earlier when I was showing that. Okay, Tim Zed, snare sounds good. Yes, now the bass, right? Okay, very cool. Arno Meli, thank you. All right, we're Awan from Indonesia, hi. Frank Giava, I work, <laughs> you work too much. Hey, you know, it's, it's, all, it's all for you, all right. Rivu from India, hello. All right, Thomas, it's, uh, oh, 11.38 p.m. there, yeah, or 10.38 p.m., sorry. Thank you very much. Of course, you'll be able to watch the replay of this. Um, all right, Stacy. Again, I uh, I always I don't use Audition. It's complicated, but I use Premiere Pro and always have a problem with consistent audio output. Not sure how the level should be with music, voice, and voiceover. I'd love to see a segment on that mixing down to a master. Absolutely, and I, I've actually streamed on this a bunch of times. Um, later in the week, I actually will be showing just that. In fact, uh, uh, today's Tuesday, maybe. Maybe Friday, I'll do that if you'd like. Um, you know, the key is, and it depends on what you're doing, right? So we have a lot of tools to make that easier for you. That's why we have things like auto ducking. But remember that if you're delivering content today, mixed final content, part of the key of gluing all of that together, so you're talking about consistency in the output, is knowing how to apply a proper compressor limiter. You can use something like a brick wall uh, limiter to just kind of prevent peaks from getting out of range. But a lot of times that involves 
grouping and subgrouping all the dialogue to control to make sure that it is all the same relative level. So there's a lot of things involved there, and it's a, it's a pretty deep process. I've actually got a whole series on YouTube called um, How to Make Great Videos, and there are several passages in there that are chapterized that talk about mixing a full track. I also have an Audio 101 series in there, and those of you watching on YouTube already know, but um, I'm putting it in the chat here in, on Facebook, Stacy, so you can go and check those out and you might be able to find what you're looking for. And again, the How to Make Great Video series, they're all chapterized, so you can skip around and find what you're looking for. Michelle, how are you doing? <laughs> Always helpful. Oh, thank you so much. Aaron, Lucid Dreama Jones, thank you. Appreciate that very much. All right, over on the tubes. All right. Francis Shepard, just to say your advice on multiband compression and mastering some time ago was very helpful. It's made a lot of difference. That's awesome. Yes, and that's exactly what I'm talking about, what I was just referencing with Stacy too. Um, it, it's, it's an essential part of that final delivery and that final glue. Your last stream on the new overlapping clips feature has revolutionized my editing. Oh, cool. <laughs> it's great, right? I know. I just used it in my last, uh, in my last uh, single, which will be released on Friday. Hashtag fear the Q-tip. Tackle boys, how are you? <laughs> Very nice to see you. All right. Peter Whiter, knob twiddling from the 60s. Absolutely. Hank Dusen, IBC Hank here. Oh, great to see you, man. All right, and over on the Behance. Okay, no additional questions there. Let's see if we've got anything coming up on the Periscope. Galactic JC, male voiceover. All right, Hydrophobo and H Learning 360. Greg Mulvey, Dr. Dar, Daniel Bechtold. All right, ADHN, very nice to see you all. Okay, well, I think we're going to call it for the day. So uh, I'll be back tomorrow. Uh, and what was I planning on doing tomorrow? What did I say? Again, I don't schedule these things, but I did, I did actually have a plan for tomorrow for myself. I'll tell you now, <laughs> since you're watching. What did I say I was going to do tomorrow? Oh, yes. We're going to talk about selective color curves um, in After Effects. So see, this is, these are the same ones that you have. These are the same ones that you have in Premiere, but it's just using that Lumetri module on the After Effects side. And then, of course, how that works with things like Dynamic Links. So, ASN, you just asked on Twitter Periscope, when's the stream tomorrow? So it'll be approximately the same time, around uh, 12.30, 1 Pacific time, and it'll be on the After Effects uh, Facebook page, or, of course, you'll be able to catch it on Twitter Periscope, on YouTube, or on Behance, all right? So selective color curves tomorrow. Until then, have a great rest of your morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are in the world, and we'll see you again next time. Thanks for watching, everyone. Take care. Bye-bye.